Well, if we have all of these potential issues and problems in the world of crypto with different ICOs and the like, the natural question is, what's the regulatory structure that might address these questions? That's a problem. If you stop it, if you think about the financial regulatory structure in the United States, it was constructed primarily in the 1930s as a result of the different regimes that we put in place to address the problems that were created by the Great Crash of 1929. Now, there are great debates about how you regulate crypto, but about the only thing that everybody agrees on is that when Congress adopted this regulatory regime in the 1930s, they weren't thinking about crypto. That was not on their minds. So it doesn't come as much of a surprise that the regulatory regime we have in place, the statutes that we have, are not well suited to the challenges that are raised by crypto. Regulators have to pound square pegs into round holes all the time here because they find new concepts, they find new ideas, and they find precedent in regulations that were never designed to address these. Now, this problem intriguingly exists on three very distinct levels. We've got the federal government in the United States. We then have the individual states which have their own regulatory regimes. And we then have international regulation because remember, much of the crypto exists in a stateless form that can be addressed and taken into and out of the system in Britain, in Malta, in Korea, and in the United States. Let's just look at the United States system. That's hellaciously complex in and of itself. First question, when is crypto a security? Well, if crypto is a security, then you've got to register with the SEC or find an exemption. If you should register and if you didn't, then you've got that registration put that I talked about. If you lie in your white paper and if you say that our tokens are gonna to operate in a certain way, and if you look at the code in the token and what you realize it doesn't operate in the way that it's described, well, that's potentially fraud and you're then potentially subject to securities enforcement action by the SEC and by private party litigants and also every fraud violation of the federal securities law is potentially a criminal violation, which opens you up to various exposures by the Department of Justice. There's then the possibility that the crypto can also be a commodity subject to regulation by the Commodities Futures and Trading Commission. Now, as a practical matter, courts have already ruled that crypto is a commodity. But as long as the crypto stays crypto, it's just the thing, whatever it is, the CFTC regulation isn't onerous. It's when you start trading derivatives on the crypto that the CFTC tends typically to become much more important. So if you have futures, for example, on Bitcoin or options on Bitcoin, or you create swaps on Bitcoin, those are situations where you really do have to worry about CFTC involvement. Then there's FinCEN regulation, all right? This is a fraud, anti-fraud set of requirements designed to protect against money laundering and other forms of corrupt behavior. These are requirements that you know your customer, that you put into place anti-money laundering regimes, and this is run through the FinCEN group in the Department of Treasury. That's another whole set of regulations that you need to think about. If that isn't enough, we have our friends at the Internal Revenue Service. The IRS is clear that transactions in crypto are taxable. And if you don't keep appropriate records, if you don't know how much you paid for your crypto and how much you got paid when you sold it, you're gonna be potentially violating federal tax law and also state tax law by not reporting any income that you may have made on the Bitcoin that you bought for 25 cents that's now worth $6,000. Last, there's the Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission has a wide set of rules involving fraudulent statements in advertising, in the promotion of various goods and services. And it's easy to observe that if something isn't a security under the federal securities laws, but false claims are made about it, well, then it's going to violate the Federal Trade Act. So if you have a situation where there are lies that are being told, and there's good reason to believe that there are lots of lies being told. Even if you're successful in arguing that I'm not lying about a security, that doesn't mean that you haven't violated the law. All right, you can wind up being in trouble with the Federal Trade Commission and you can have exposure there as well. 
Now, if liability at the federal level isn't sufficiently interesting, you also have potential liability at the state level. Each of the 50 states has their own securities law, and if you don't qualify for exemptions at the federal level, you can then wind up in trouble at the state level. So you can wind up being sued under California law and under federal law and under Texas law and under Massachusetts law if it turns out that you wind up with a sale uh, that violates the law in all of those jurisdictions. In addition, states have money transmitter rules. To the extent that your crypto acts as though it's transmitting money between locations, you may have to get money transmitter licenses and you then may have to visit each one of the states in which you're doing business in order to get a money transmitter license. And if you aren't totally exhausted about the legal issues that arise simply at the federal and state level in the United States, recognize that your crypto may be available worldwide. China has its own set of regulations. Japan has its own set of regulations. France has its own set of regulations. Canada has its own set of regulations. The provinces in Canada have their own sets of regulations. Malta is trying to build a regulatory system which is very welcoming in this particular area. And if you really want to operate a compliant system, you've got to be on top of all of these different regulatory regimes because when you're operating in crypto space, you're operating everywhere and nowhere at the same time, and you're potentially subject to all of these different levels of regulatory scrutiny.